Hey guys, welcome to a motherboard review. We're looking at the ECS K7S5A Pro. This is quite a legendary motherboard from back in the day. And the cool thing is these are new old stock and you can buy them off eBay for $19.99. For this video, we teamed up with an eBay store, Scott's Obsolete, $19.99 for the ECS motherboard. And we will later in another video look at the PC chips, also a socket A motherboard, for only $12.99. So this video is feature packed. We will talk a little bit about the history of this famous motherboard. We will have a look inside the box. What do we get? We will take a closer look at the motherboard, of course. We're gonna flash the latest BIOS, have a look at the important BIOS options, what's available on the website for downloads. We will check out the performance, comparing this motherboard to some of the other socket A boards we reviewed in the past. This motherboard is special. It supports SDR as well as DDR memory. So that was a great opportunity to do a performance uh, comparison between the two memory types. Also, it has a universal HP slot, but does it handle a 3DVX Voodoo card? We will find that out as well. And of course, compatibility with these low power Geode NX processors, because if you're building a socket A motherboard, finding a suitable power supply is a bit of a challenge. So these Geode processors being extremely low power might be very interesting to you guys. This is what's inside the box. So we're getting an IO shield, which is always very handy if you're buying a used motherboard that is often not included. We're getting uh, two ribbon cables, one for floppy, one for IDE, very important. The motherboard, although you can download the PDF from the ECS website and also a uh, installation disk. And this one is actually quite important. Not all drivers are available on the website. For example, the BIOS, uh, flashing tool, the download link doesn't work. And also the via USB 2.0 driver is not included on the website, but is on the CD, so very important. And here we can see the motherboard in all its glory. What stands out, of course, is the purple PCB. Here we have the model number K7S5A. This is the pro version, and it's the latest revision 5.0. So whenever I review a product that I haven't used in the past, so where I don't have personal experiences to share, I do my best to uh, do a bit of research and find out if there's anything interesting to talk about. And I found a lot of really interesting stories about this motherboard. It was very good value. The VIA chipsets, they kind of dominated the Socket A motherboards with the KT133, 133A and the 266 and then SIS. Uh, jumped into the market and produced the 735 uh, chipset. And this ECS uh, model, the K7S5A, was one of the first and main motherboards uh, with this chipset, and it was extremely cheap. It had uh, decent performance, often outperforming the VIA KT266. So it was very popular uh, with budget enthusiasts, I would say. And yeah, so that's what we're going to look at today and uh, really looking forward to finding out what this motherboard can do. Let's talk a little bit about the chipset, the SAS735. SAS has a history of making chipsets that are highly integrated rather than going with a north bridge and south bridge. Everything is inside a single chip. Interestingly enough, inside is actually still the traditional north bridge and south bridge design uh, connected with a link. I'll put some diagrams uh, on the picture, but yeah. Also, this chipset runs very cool, uh, unlike the wire chipsets, so it doesn't need a fan. So yeah, really good chipset, and we will find out how this performs very shortly. And here we have a real highlight of this motherboard. Not only do we have SDR memory slots, but also DDR. That's very cool. So this is obviously um, interesting for anyone wanting to test memory slots, for example. These days, uh, I argue that most will just go with DDR, but back in the day, if you had already invested some money into SDR modules, then this was a really interesting board. You could uh, go with SDR for the moment and then later upgrade to DDR. Now you can't use both at the same time, so it's either SDR or DDR. There's also a memory limit of one gigabyte, so you can use a module of 512 meg each, but not more than that. So here we've got the audio modem riser slot, the universal AGP4X and five PCI slots. Now, I had a go at trying a 3DFX Voodoo 3 card in this slot. Let's have a look what happened.
Yes, you guessed right, that was Unreal running on the 3DFX Voodoo 3 and that confirms this motherboard is compatible with 1.5 volt as well as 3.3 volt video cards. We have two ATA 100ID ports and also a floppy port. The BIOS chip is removable, so that's awesome. That means you can try out these custom BIOS versions that are floating around on the internet. And if something goes wrong and you've got an external programmer, you can always recover your system. The Pro version of the K7S5A has USB 2.0 and it's got a total of 10 USB ports. So here we can see the via USB 2.0 controller and that one connects to four USB ports at the back. On top of that, we have three USB headers here for uh, a total of six USB 1.1 uh, interfaces and that is courtesy of the SIS chipset. So the SIS chipset provides six USB 1.1 and this wire chipset here provides another four USB 2.0 ports at the back. For audio, we have a chip from C Media. And if we move over here, we can see another chip here. This is the Ethernet chip from Realtek. At the back, we have two PS2 ports, serial and parallel. There are four USB 2.0 ports, fast Ethernet and audio. Here we have the CMOS battery. There's a jumper to clear CMOS. We also have two fan headers, one here for the system fan and the CPU fan header is over here. And finally, there's also a header for infrared right here. Let's have a look at the capacitors around the CPU socket area. We've got OST caps. Uh, all of them are in perfect condition. And elsewhere on the motherboard, we've got a different brand, G Luxon. If it has a BIOS, we're gonna flash it. So I used the USB floppy drive and using the 3811 BIOS. Now the flash utility link on the website isn't working, so I used the tool from the CD. Let's have a quick look in the BIOS. There's all the usual stuff. Load the best performance settings for decent performance. Uh, the important stuff for performance is under the memory timing options. Set DRAM timing configuration to ultra. You can tighten the timings to 2, 6 and 3. And as another setting for the DRAM driver slew rating, I changed that to fast. It's something I do with all the socket A motherboards. Um, I don't overclock, but I do tweak the memory timings because if you use a decent DDR400 module, you're guaranteed to be able to use the uh, tightest timing set, uh, 266 speeds. There's also um, another interesting option for thumb drive support in DOS. So yeah, that lets you um, yeah install DOS on a USB thumb drive and play games of that. So that might be interesting if you um, don't want to use a hard drive and for DOS, you know, um, USB flash drives have the perfect size. Also under the CPU plug and play screen, if you have a, uh, if you swap a CPU or you're setting up the board for the first time, it defaults to 100 megahertz for the FSB and memory. So you have to manually set it to 133 slash 133. And yeah, this happens every time you swap out the processor. So just make sure you pop in there once and configure your processor correctly. It's time to look at some benchmarks comparing this motherboard with a couple of other Socket A motherboards. So we're using the typical test setup. We've got a GeForce 2 GTS with 64 megabyte of memory. I'm using a Promise PCI SATA controller, a 80 gigabyte SATA hard drive, and the Deepcool 500 watt fully modular power supply. I use the same power supply so that the power draw results are comparable across the board. So let's start with expandable. The red bar is the ECS motherboard with the SIS chipset, uh, which we're reviewing in this video. The green bars, they're all using the VIA KT266A chipset. The bottom one is that Fujitsu Siemens motherboard we reviewed a while ago. The other two, the MSI and the ASUS, we haven't reviewed yet, but they are both uh, quite fast. So we can see that the ECS is a little bit behind the pack in expandable and uh, the trend continues. It's just a little bit slower, but uh, it's not too much, maybe 10, 12 FPS in Draken. Then we're moving on to Quake 2 in software render, also a little bit behind, but not much. The same we can see in Quake 2 with OpenGL, 408 FPS. Uh, here we got Quake 3, uh, it's about 20 FPS behind the faster boards. Then we've got MDK2, we can see the same thing. 
Moving on to Sirius Sam, 125 FPS, and the other boards are a little bit in front, but it is faster than that Fujitsu Siemens board. That one performs the slowest by a long shot. And here we've got Unreal Tournament, 114 FPS. Moving on to the power draw results, this is idle sitting on a desktop, 96 watts for the ECS motherboard. The Fujitsu Siemens so far is my only motherboard that uh, has such a low power draw under idle. All the other motherboards are around 90 to 100 watts. The ASUS traditionally always um, pulls most of the power. This particular model, not saying all ASUS motherboards, but this ASUS socket A motherboard just pulls a little bit more power than all the other boards. Moving on to uh, load results with Quake 2 in software render, 114 watts, so that's a bit more than the MSI, but less than the ASUS. And moving on to OpenGL uh, render at 1600 by 1200, putting some load on the video card, 121 watts. It's a little bit more than the MSI, but less than the ASUS. Now, because this motherboard has both SDR and DDR, I just had to benchmark both. So in expandable, we can see 140 FPS with SDR, which is not that far behind, to be honest. Same thing in Draken, there's a difference, but it's not much. We can see the same thing in Quake 2, 79.6 FPS with SDR. Moving on to Quake 2 in OpenGL render, 377 FPS. And in Quake 3, once again, a little bit behind in terms of percentage, that's maybe 10-11% uh, slower. In MDK2, we can see the same thing. And also in Sirius Sam and in Unreal Tournament. So I was quite surprised how little performance loss we actually saw when switching down to SDR memory. Quite a lot less uh, than we saw what we saw on the Pentium 4. That machine really needs the memory bandwidth and we lost quite a bit of performance when we used SDR instead of DDR. And finally, let's have a look at the AMD Geode processors. These are awesome because this will let you use modern power supplies with socket A. If you're not sure what I'm on about, I will put a link down below in the description and also top right corner, look for a card that explains the issue with modern power supplies when you're using a socket A motherboard. So I tried two CPUs. First up, the NX1750, which runs at 1.4 gigahertz. And yes, we can see a lower voltage, 1.408. The processor gets detected by the bias. And here's a screen uh, screenshot of CPU set as well. The second processor, the NX1500, this one uses even lower voltage. The bias selects 1.168 volts, so that's uh, wonderful. That's a lot less than the default 1.75 or whatever it is. If I got it wrong, I will put it in the uh, video as an overlay. So that's fantastic. This motherboard fully supports these two processors. You can also select the multiplier live uh, in Windows with various tools. So that's fantastic. If So if you're worried about using a modern power supply, uh, if you get this motherboard together with a geode, um, you're good to go. So let's wrap up this video. What do I think? I think for $19.99 you can't go wrong. Not only is this motherboard good value and you're getting uh, basically a free video card thrown in as well. Uh, the new old stock experience is that alone is worth the price. Uh, unwrapping all the accessories and yeah, it even smells new. The caps are all clean and in good shape. So that alone is really awesome. The motherboard has a very clean uh, layout. There's only yeah, just a few jumpers, one for the CMOS clear and for the audio, but otherwise it's jumper free. That's, uh, that's lovely. All the resources are on the website, but you do have to use the driver disk for, to get some files. Not all of them are on the website. The latest bias, I had absolutely no issues. Uh, SDR and DDR support, that's really a nifty feature. Good for memory testing. Um, are you going to use SDR these days? Very likely, uh, very unlikely. DDR memory is dirt cheap. The universal HP slot is beautiful. That means you can use 3DFX Voodoo cards, Voodoo 3, Voodoo 5, whatever you fancy. And it supports the AMD Geode processors if you're worried about using a modern power supply. The performance was a little bit behind the fast via KT. 266A chipset, but it's not a big deal. If you need that little bit extra performance, just go with a slightly higher clocked processor. And in terms of uh, what could you use this motherboard for, I think this is perfect for Windows 98, for a high performance um, Windows 98 machine, or if you go like with a geode processor for a nice energy efficient machine. Under Windows 98, really, you don't need much more than a gigahertz or 1.4. It will have beautiful performance. 
but you can also use Windows XP. We are slightly limited by the RAM, but the amount of RAM, only one gigabyte. But for early Windows XP games, this is not a big deal at all. And there you have it, guys. This board is excellent value, just like back in the day. Now, if you've got any comments, leave them down below, especially if you owned a K7 S5A motherboard. I always love to hear your personal stories. And that's pretty much it for this video. Give it a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, click on the notification bell, and that's it. I shall see you soon with another one.